Okay, that opening mark of a pour, the service of your KDHL Agri Boosters. They include Larson Industries Vinyl and Farm Supply. Good, you check them out at LarsonIndustries.com. And Ag Power Enterprises, your John Deere dealer in Owatonna, Hollandale, Wasika, and Belle Plaine. And we're talking with members of the Coast Guard Auxiliary today. To be honest with you, I didn't even know there was such a thing until I got this information from the folks. And uh, we're going to get some. Ah, our mouse is frozen here. Won't move. Don't you love technology? Anyway, I'm going to tell you about this. It's back again this weekend, the 37th Annual Faribault Rifle and Pistol Club Gun Show. This Saturday, 8 until 5. Sunday, 9 until 3. Great food available with breakfast served both days. Admission still a bargain, just 5 bucks. Really? 5 bucks. Children 16 and under are free when accompanied by an adult. The 37th Annual Gun Show at the Armed Forces Reserve Center. That's at 3000 West Airport Road here in Faribault. It's a brand new facility. It's great. And that's this weekend the 37th Annual Faribault Rifle and Pistol Club Gun Show. And again, we've got the frozen mouse here in the studios. So I guess we won't be hearing that. With us today on AM Minnesota is Neil McMillan and John Peterson. They're from the South and North Metro, and they're in the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Kerry McCarthy from the Sweet Spot fame is also in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, but he produced the show today, so he didn't have to go on the air. That sly guy. Very sly. We have in studio a video camera. I think they're they're doing a video camera effort here to uh, tape the program as well, as the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary is having a benefit breakfast. It's coming up at the Faribault American Legion on Sunday, November 27th. Sunday, November 27th, it'll be from 8.30 until 12.30, and tickets again are available at the Sweet Spot. Or you can call 507-210-6544, 507-210-6544. Again, all proceeds benefit the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Division 11 Public Education Programs. And so, with us today, again, Neil McMillan and John Peterson joining us on AM Minnesota today. So guys, certainly appreciate you doing this. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. being here. Yep. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a Coast Guard Auxiliary. I'm sure you find that when you go out in public a lot, right? We do find that. We do find that. I mean, everybody, everybody I think has heard of the Coast Guard, but nobody, I, I shouldn't say nobody, but most people haven't heard of the Coast Guard Auxiliary. So how did you find out about it? I found out after 9-11 and I bought my first boat which um, I think I overextended myself a little bit. I bought a 26-foot uh, boat. I had never operated a large boat in my life. And uh, after trying to go out on the water a few times, figured out that this probably wasn't a wise idea. I should probably figure out how to actually operate it. So, and so the Coast Guard helped you with that? Coast Guard Auxiliary, a friend of mine said, why don't you check into the Coast Guard Auxiliary? I know they have classes. Uh, one of the nice things about the Auxiliary is if you join uh, once you become a member and become qualified in the auxiliary, uh, you can be trained in a number of different areas, take boating classes, they're all free. That's one of the, th the three benefits of being in the auxiliary is, is all the training that they provide to us. That's John Peterson's voice you just heard and Neil McMillan with us as well. And I see that the <coughs> Congress established the Coast Guard Auxiliary in 1939 to assist the active duty Coast Guard. You guys get no compensation, right? That's correct. That's correct. It's all volunteer. All, all volunteer. Board. All volunteer. But we get a, a lot more back than, than what we give. I think we'd be in agreement on that. Neil and I are involved Absolutely. in a lot of areas and uh, continue to be involved because of the fact that the camaraderie, um, our four cornerstones in, in the auxiliary are a fellowship, recreational boating safety, operations and marine safety, and member services. So there's a lot of ways that you can serve. Uh, one of the areas that Neil and I really enjoy is the fellowship part of being in the auxiliary together. So we do a lot of things together. Our unit does a lot of things together in our flotilla. And uh, we really do enjoy each other's company as much as being on the water and, 
and teaching uh, kids about being safe on the water. I probably shouldn't admit this on the air because then people will know how to kill me, but <clears throat> I don't know how to swim. Can I be a member of the Coast Guard Auxiliary? Absolutely. Absolutely. Will you, you sure be willing can. to wear a life jacket when you get in the boat? Oh, of course. I do that all the time now. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Almost drowned when I was a kid. We went inner tubing and I didn't have a life vest. And a guy tipped me over in the inner tube because I told him when we were out in the inner tube, I said, yeah, I don't know how to swim. Ah, you know how to swim. No, I don't. Phew, tips me over. I went like a rock. I saved my life. Well, you know, we, had, we, had, we have 12 and a half million registered boaters in the United States and last year I think we had over 4,600 accidents, about 700 deaths and over 3,000 injuries and um, three-fourths of those fatal boating accidents were drownings because people weren't wearing their life jackets and that's one of the main messages we're trying to get out to the kids we talk to as well as mom and dad is, is uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty simple act to, to wear a life jacket when you get in the boat. Um, it's not so simple once the boat turns over and there's an injury or you can't get to your life jacket. Very difficult to get it on once you're in the water. And uh, why not just wear it when you, before you get in the boat? So this breakfast has uh, Coasty the robot <coughs> featured. What is that? Coasty. Coasty's my favorite uh, robot. Uh, if you can imagine a, uh, a small tugboat, about four feet by three feet. He has a smokestack. Uh, he's he's uh, an animated robotic cartoon character, uh, but he's also very mobile. He's on wheels. He moves around. He has navigation and searchlights, a rotating beacon, siren, air horn. Uh, he's got huge eyes that light up that uh, the eyelids actually move. He can also talk and play music and interact with the kids, and that's what we use him for. Is Coasty teaches rules about what to do and what not to do when they're on the water in emergency situations. And the kids are so enthralled by, you know, talking to Kosey, they actually think that he's a living, breathing, talking uh, being. And uh, so it gives us an opportunity to, uh, to reach kids with the boating safety message. And uh, so Kosey will teach kids slogans that they can remember, like reach and throw, but never go in. That message, along with interaction with the kids, teaches kids how to throw or reach something to a person who is in trouble in the water, rather than try to actually go in and jump in the water and try to save them, because what you end up with is two people that need right. saving. Uh, another slogan we teach is, don't just pack it, wear your life jacket. And uh, Coastie's very interactive with the kids, and it's one of the reasons that Coastie has been so successful. We go into the schools, uh, uh, churches, uh, hospitals and many public affairs events that we do, we bring Coasty along and uh, he's really a, a great tool to reach the kids. And this is all volunteer, the Coast Guard Auxiliary and all volunteer effort and you have to be 17 or older and your oldest members you were telling me before we hit the airwaves are in their 80s, right? Yes, we have one member who's 85, his prior service, he's actually served in the Merchant Marines, he served in the Army and he served in the Coast Guard. He's been in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, I think, for over 30 years now, and uh, just turned 85. Still comes to meetings, active in, in the four quarter stones of the auxiliary, and uh, pretty pretty amazing man. And a little oh, video of Coastie to give you an idea. This is Coastie. Wow, that's quite a that's quite a robot. It's pretty sad when a robot's more talented than you are, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it can do more than I can do. It can blink, it can sing, it can do everything. It's totally uh, radio controlled, and John is one of the uh, top operators. He uses a synthesized voice to uh, communicate the safe boating message to the children, and they really, really appreciate him. And they, we have people that come back to our public affairs events that the kids remembered from their earlier visit. Oh, there's Coasty again. We want to see him. So it's a really fun experience. Are there more than one? There's 48 of them in the United States. Yeah, they travel all over the United States. Um, all the Coasty operators, uh, since they're, it is a fairly complicated piece of equipment to operate. And uh, so we, we actually have a training program for our operators that they go through to number one, learn how to interact with children, uh, how, to, how to operate Coasty, do repairs, not repairs, but you know, typical maintenance that we would have to do to keep them up and running. Is there a Coast Guard auxiliary in every state? Um, Pretty much every so. state is, is recognized. We have uh, 
in, in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, there are about 30,000 members nationwide. And in our area, we are part of the 8th Coast Guard District, and in, more specifically, 8th Western, which covers uh, 16 states from pretty much the Canadian border all the way down to northern Louisiana. Yeah, our district has 1,400 volunteers. We have 67 flotillas, four detachments, and uh, 12 divisions. And uh, our members participate in all types of missions ranging from public education. Uh, we do vessel safety checks for uh, any boater that would like to have a free vessel safety check. We would be happy to do that. Uh, we conduct safety patrols under Coast Guard orders, uh, both by boat and air, and uh, we conduct other missions as authorized by the Commandant of the Coast Guard as well. In Neil McMillian, John Peterson in studio, Kerry McCarthy's here, and Mr. Jones. You remember the song? We do. Right? Me and Mrs. Jones? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't? Uh oh, I better ask my wife. <laughs> Mr. Jones is running the cameras here and, and is really having a hard time getting the lighting adjusted for Mr. McMillan and my head. So we apologize for that, but you know, you didn't know what you were getting into, Mr. Jones. Should have brought an extra Coast Guard cap for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's been around since, uh, well, nine mm -hmm. years. He's been in the Coast Guard. You've been in the Coast Guard? Seven years. And yeah. seven for me as well. You guys good friends? Did you join together then? We didn't join together, but we became close friends once we became we, we got into it. Uh, we both serve in the Coast Guard Auxiliary Color Guard as well together for about the past six years. So I know Kerry was telling me before we hit the airwaves that he got a letter <clears throat> because he's a ham, a radio operator. He got a letter. He was intrigued, went to the dinner, and I guess the dinner sold him on the whole thing. So when you got started, <laughs> yeah, it was a good dinner, right? It was very good. You it's have? the Officers Club. It was at the Officers Club. Yeah. Wow. So what are some of the perks to be involved in this? And how do I join if I'd like to join? Well, the perks uh, primarily are the personal satisfaction of serving in a volunteer organization that is doing good and saving lives. Um, our motto is America's Volunteer Guardians. And as you mentioned before, we are not paid. We are strictly volunteer. We are a force multiplier as we are known as part of Team Coast Guard. And because we are a multiplier, we actually double the number of Coast Guard folks in the United States. There's 33,000 auxiliarists, a little over 30,000 active duty Coast Guard. So uh, it's, it's very rewarding uh, by, the look, by the number of ribbons and <coughs> awards and things that John and I are wearing, these are all uh, qualifications and things that we have that we have attained as members. Uh, you ask about how to join. Well, I happen to be the human resources officer for our flotilla, and we have a number of publications. There's a website. We have a CD that is pretty much interactive for the potential member to go online, look at some of the sites, look at some of the information and find out about all the areas that you can be involved in. We are going to be doing recruiting on the 27th at the American Legion when we have our, pa our breakfast. So um, that'll be an opportunity for you to stop by and learn more about the auxiliary. We have only men in studio, but women can join too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, uh, we are definitely a diverse program. Do you have a lot in your local unit? Uh, in our local unit, we have uh, three ladies and we have four, four out of our 40, 45 members. Mm -hmm. So you need more ladies. We do. We do. We do. We're actively looking for to be more diverse. So you might want to attend this. Again, that's the breakfast, the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Breakfast, and all the proceeds benefit the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Division 11 public education programs. You already touched on some of those. The uh, boating safety would probably be number one, right? Boating safety would be number one. We, uh, uh, we're very active in promoting and improving the recreational boating safety in our area. Um, we also provide trained boat crews and facilities that augment the Coast Guard, enhance the safety and the security of our ports and our waterways. And uh, we support the active duty, like Neil was talking about, 
uh, with the active duty Coast Guard with operational, administrative, and logistical requirements. But we also offer pretty much any kind of training that the active duty Coast Guard members could get. Uh, you can get through the auxiliary as well, such as becoming a vessel examiner, a marine safety specialist. Uh, you can become a specialist in communications. That's why we're attracting a lot of ham radio operators right now. <coughs> We have uh, uh, training for, uh, to train you as an instructor. If you want to be on the water and be operational, Lake Neal is a certified coxswain. Uh, both Neal and I are weather specialists and have training as in advanced coastal navigation. Uh, we have basic seamanship courses, leadership courses, uh, and we're trained in all the incident command system and hazardous materials courses. So there's just uh, pretty much any type of area that you might be in interested in uh, we can offer in, through the auxiliary. And all those courses are free of charge to free you? Free of charge to us, yes, absolutely. Correct. You have a boot camp? We do not need a boot camp. Uh, there aren't any uh, specific physical requirements as long as you're able to, to accomplish the task that you are interested in, uh, you're welcome. And like I said, we have members that are 80, in their 80s that are still active, still going to meetings, still involved with the areas that uh, still interest them. Do you stuff. get a physical? No physical. No physical when you join? No. no. Do you we get insurance? No, we don't have insurance. Uh, one of the things you, you will have to do is you will have to pass a uh, security check before you're allowed to come in. We, we are part of the military, we are part of the Coast Guard, and that's part of the requirements for joining. Prior to 19, or prior to 9-11, the Coast Guard was under the Department of Transportation. Uh, shortly after 9-11, the Department of Homeland Security was formed, and Coast Guard is part of that, as we are as well. John got an opportunity to uh, John got an opportunity to help out at Katrina, right? We we have we have uh, uh, provided logistical support, administrative support. Uh, that's one of the areas that we do so that the active duty can go out. Uh, Neil has been on the communications team that we've sent out to the Red River. We have not actively gone to Katrina, but we have sent people in our unit through uh, FEMA have gone out to various disasters to, to assist with the Katrina.